Okay, so I'm going to be transparent with y'all. Talk very to you. quick. Uh, I went through a very... 2021 was a dark year for me. Um, it started off amazing, but like my dad got sick, my mom got sick. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Because I just want to build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I want to keep it real with you. I want to live better, eat better. I want to love better, sleep better. Yeah, I want to feel so aligned. Sublime. All right, Bam, welcome back. <laughs> What's up? Let's talk about... Um, Hmm. Let's talk about kind of the the reception of the videos so far. What has stood out to you? What have people been saying? Like, you said somebody stopped you um, in person. Yes. So tell yes. tell me everything. What's that been like? So I was downtown in Charlotte, and I was just riding, you know, those electric scooters, and I had stopped for a second, and. I was with a friend at the time and she was looking and she was like, why does, why do they keep staring over here? And I looked and I was like, I, I had no idea. I couldn't really understand why they were staring. Um, and then they were like valets and they was like, you could come park over here. And I'm like, okay. So I, I drove and I'm like, but this is valet. And then I'm thinking, but I didn't have to pay for it, but okay. So he was like, I remember you. And I was like, remember me from where? And he was like, I saw you on the YouTube channel, Wanna Talk. And he was like, oh my God. Like when I saw you, I was like, it looked like her, but I'm not sure it's her. But then I saw your car and I was like, oh my God, it's really her. Yeah. And it, I think that, You're a little celebrity was, right <laughs> that was probably the first time I'm like, okay, maybe more people know me than I actually they know me because you don't know everybody. You don't know 10,000 people. You barely know 50 people. So to have one person acknowledge you, and not only are they acknowledging you, but they're like, you did amazing. And it's, a, it's another man. Another man, an older man at that. Wow, okay. Yeah, I would say he had to be roughly in his 50s. Oh, wow. See, I was thinking in my head like a 20-something year old. Wow. He okay. was around his 50s. To me, he looked like that. Um, and he had nothing but positive things to say. He was like, keep doing what you're doing, sister. Like, we need this. He was like, I know everybody's not going to agree with you, and it's okay. But there are people out here that... Men and women that understand. So just just keep going. And it made me feel good. It made me feel like you need to keep going. Don't stop. Everybody's not going to agree with everything you feel. They're not going to agree with your opinion. Um, but there are people that it helps. It helps. So one of the things I've had an issue with, some people actually reach out to my interviewees. They DM them. They send them messages, comments. <laughs> What's been your experience with that? Um, very frequently, uh, they'll reach out and say, hey, I saw you, I want to talk. You're so beautiful. You did an amazing job. Some people actually break down points and be like, well, you said this, well, you said this. <laughs> At this time, Sam. At this you know time, know? really though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At 23 seconds, 23 minutes and nine seconds, you said this and boom, I could relate to that. I felt that in my soul and I'm like, I appreciate that. And it, I mean, they're detailed. So you know how some people are trying to say, I saw you and want to talk and, you know, you were beautiful. You did a good job, but they only saw the header. They didn't really see it. But that's their way of kind of getting in to try to talk to me. But then you have some people who are actually, you could tell they, they watched care the about whole it thing. Right, they, yeah. right. Gotcha. Um, I actually haven't received any negative feedback. When people reach out to me or talk to me about it. Um, so I haven't had one man come to me or DM me um, and say, I didn't agree with you. I thought that was, I thought that was. Maybe the last video. You probably got the most. I had that yeah. on the video. Okay. But people who reached out to me after the video, I only get those type of comments. <laughs> 
under the video, but they don't ever reach out to me and say, and I'm the type of person, like, if you do disagree, let's have a conversation about it. Let's talk about it. But this is the thing when people disagree, it's multiple reasons why they disagree. It could be projecting because what you're saying actually relates to them. So they don't really want to talk about it and they want to disagree or they may not understand. But I'm an open book. Come on, let's talk. Let's have a conversation about it. Tell me what's on your mind and I'll tell you what's on my mind. And we can agree to disagree, but at least, you know, we're hearing each other out. People like to prejudge without even sitting down talking to a person. You don't even know this person. You telling this person about their whole life and what they're doing, what type of person they are, by a conversation when you've never sat down and talked to them. Sure. Talk to me about like people that you know, because I'm sure you probably sent the video to people, maybe siblings, cousins, parents, whatever the case may be. Has it what what's their feedback been like? People who know you for real. I'm gonna be honest. I don't believe many people that I know actually tuned in. Mm. Um, my parents did. Mm. For sure. My parents did. On one of the episodes, it actually got my dad emotional. Um, it was the one that we were talking about, like, I believe this is the second episode. The very last one. I'll put it up in a card or something. Okay. Yeah. The very last one was his favorite one. The white man one? <laughs> the, the one that everybody was, was in the comments. That was actually my dad's favorite one. He messaged me while he was at work. He was like, babe, this is it. This is it. Uh, he, he loved all the other ones, but it was just something about that one. Um, my mom, she watched all of them. We would go break down the different topics. And my mom had nothing negative to say. Um, she was just like, just make sure you don't say like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I'm like, okay. She was like, you just said it. Um, but so far as friends, I haven't had one friend come to me and say, hey, like, this was this was really good. I couldn't tell you because... I sent it out and I've had people say, hey, I'm going to watch it. But they never watched it. But I don't think they actually watched it. How does that make you feel? Because <sighs> I listen, I, if nobody understands, I understand. You know, it's hurtful. It's hurtful. Um, I think I might have a, maybe, maybe two who actually checked it out. I believe they checked it out. Uh, but it, it is hurtful because you just think about how you support others or those same people. And it, it could get discouraging. But for every five friends that don't support it, I have a lot of other people who are reach out and I'm rooting for you. I can't wait for your next episode. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, when are you going to do another one? And it's like, that fuels me. Um, but I, I do get, get upset about it. They'll share it, but I don't think they fully tuned into it. And I mean, that's a form of support though, by sharing it and say, hey, watch it. But then if somebody asks you about it, you can't really tell them what's a, what is, what's a, uh, Tongue twisted. You can't tell them what it's about because you haven't watched it yourself. You just shared it. So it does make me sad because growing up, I was a person who felt like if I was validated or that if my family would be like, oh, I love this, or my friends would be like, I love this, and I know that I'm doing something right. But I'm noticing the more and more I elevate, the more and more friends and family are the least ones to support you in your journey. It's mostly strangers who came across your page and was having a bad day and you made a meal and they're like, I've been trying to figure out how to make something like this. Or they go and want to talk and listen to me talk and they're like, wow. I love the way you broke that down as a man. It made me think differently. I've had men come to me yeah, and say- It gave me hope. Yeah, yeah. 
And I'm like, I'm not going to stop. I don't care if I don't have any friends or family supporting me. But I do have a little support. A little support. So tell me about, you know, because uh, the interview is probably like January, right? January, February. How has BAM changed, evolved um, since then? Maybe just in general, just like, you know, you were going to evolve in these ways already. And then maybe doing the interview, um, getting the comments expedited, sped up some part of my evolution. So how have you changed? Okay, so I'm going to be transparent with y'all Talk very quick. Uh, I went through a very... 2021 was a dark year for me. Um, it started off amazing, but like my dad got sick, my mom got sick. Uh, I lost like a second parent. So I was full of emotions. And, you know, sometimes when you're too overwhelmed, it could just cause you to go in a dark place. Uh, and I'm being vulnerable with y'all, so please don't use it against me. <laughs> um, but it it was it was a very humbling experience. I lost everything, and when I say everything, I don't mean like my home, um, or my car, things like that. But the peace that I had, I I lost that, um, and I just it was getting worse and worse. So when I, oh, and financially, I was at the lowest point in my life that I've been in since I moved out on my own. Uh, what did I say, 18, 19, around that area, uh, that age. Um, and I, had, I didn't know what to do. I had no idea what to do. And, you know, I started picking myself back up later January. And I'm like, look, you cannot sit here and just be sad. You need to suck it up and figure out what you're going to do. And then we made contact and I wound up coming on here on Want to Talk. And that was... You keep saying Want to Talk. We need to talk. We need to talk. I like it. Why, why, A lot of people do that, why, ironically. A lot of people like, to Want to Talk. Want to Talk. <laughs> we came... I came on here on We Need to Talk. And it was kind of like that booster for me, like... Okay, now you're getting back into yourself. Prior to that, start working out again, eating healthy. I was on a fitness journey. I lost everything that I had worked hard for last year, and I had to start from scratch this year. But it allowed me to have a different dynamics, how it feels to lose weight and how it feels to gain weight. So now with my business, I'm able to help Two different parties. It's not just one person or one type of body frame. Um, it's whatever. So that and mentally, uh, I'm in such a more peaceful place now. But that came with loving myself more, digging deeper into myself, even making mistakes that I've made before. And it's like, okay, do you get it now? You understand now? And it's like... I don't know why it took five times for this to happen, but I understand it now. Um, knowing my self-worth, uh, researching things about dating when it comes to like interracial dating and the background and just digging in my culture more. Uh, so a lot of self-healing, because even then, it's things that I believed in our last episode that today my view has slightly changed on. Talk Just, about it. Talk about <laughs> it. How it is. And so, you know, before in the last episode, oh, they were on me heavy like, oh, she doesn't love us. She loves white men. And I never, I actually said, I want to be with a black man. I said that multiple times, but, you know, people want to only take a part of what they hear and run with it. Uh, but knowing what I know now, my preference 
is even if I don't end up with a black man, I do want to be with what, what do they consider that minority? I, a colored man. So that could be anything, <laughs> but you know, you get where I'm going with that. Um, but preferably black. Yes, and just be because we are more relatable. Um, if something happens and we running down the street and we got to run for cover, you will understand my mindset more than someone who hasn't had to experience this. And to be honest, it is different when it comes to law, when it comes to being in, in a very tragic situation I can relate to you in that tragic situation more than like someone of not my color. They're not going to understand it. They could try to understand, but no, ma no matter how much you try to understand, it'll be hard for you too because you've never had to encounter that. You've never been put in that position. And even those who have, because I'm not saying it's like that for everyone, but if you look at the way society is or how it's been for centuries, you could never relate to me and understand how it felt, feels for my culture to get whipped, to be chained, to be the least valued, but the most powerful. We are the least valued. Value, but the most powerful. We just don't all tap into that power because society has made us feel like we don't have that. So we only keep ourselves at where we feel like society allows us to be. But all that could be broken. So I have to be with someone who understands me. Uh, and that's just where I'm at. With that's that. just that on that. Okay. Yeah. Um... 